Okay, so what you're going to need to make this elf slash Santa hat is obviously I have my Centro knitting machine. Obviously, you can use an Addy or any other um, circular knitting machine. Or of course, you can make this by hand. Then I also have to hand um, my loom pick. Um, it's just a standard loom pick, nothing special about it. Um, my favourite crochet hook, this is a 5mm. Um, you can use anything between a 5 and a 7. Um, I tend to find this knitting machine has a gauge of about 7mm. Then I have a tapestry needle, which we'll use to cast off and also to um, stitch the brim. I have a tape measure. Um, just so I can keep an eye on measurements. I then also have this green yarn. It is coming up a bit teal on camera, um, but it is green in person. Uh, hoping this is enough. And um, this is just some leftover that I had from some commission projects. Um, yeah, it's just DK. Um, Aaron is better in the machine, um, but for this elf hat, I want to wear it on Christmas Day when ovens are going to be on. It's going to be hot, so it's going to create a bit more of a lightweight hat to wear. And then for the um, pom pom and the brim, I'm just using this um, So Crafty Baby Yarn in Almond Milk. Um, it is, it's from Aldi. Um, it does say super bulky and he's an 8mm needle, so it will be quite difficult to get it through the machine. So in order to help me get it through the machine, I have a dumbbell. Which I will show you what I'm going to do with this <laughs> to help me get it through the machine um, later on. And that's just my very wonderful tripod that my husband built for me. Um, so I can film this lovely video for you. Um, and that's also weighted down by a dumbbell. Um, okay, so let's get started. Okay, so we're going to start with the green yarn or red if you're making the Santa hat. Again, this is DK, so it's going to be a bit more of a lightweight hat. Um, you can use iron weight, which is my preferred yarn for this machine. Okay, um, and seeing as we're going to be, so I've got this set to T for a tubular, and we're going to start with, I will start with the white needle. Um, so just pop your yarn around the white needle like so, leaving a bit of a tail just because sometimes it does backtrack. And we're just going to do um, the really easy cast on because we want a drawstring at the end. Um, so we're just going to go in front and behind each one like so. So just slowly wind your machine. Now we're at the white needle, so I'm just going to wrap it around this last little pin, pop it into the yarn guide, and then down into the tension guide. Um, I'm going to put it in the tightest one, I think. And um, for iron weight, I put it in the middle one, and that seems to be fine. I don't work with DK all that much, um, so we'll just pop it in the tightest one for now, and that should be fine. Okay, so now we're ready to start. Um, so for mine, I did. Um, Seven, 75 rows um, and that makes it not too long um, but it's long enough that the bobble can manage that. Okay one thing I did also forget that you might need you can use this counter um, but I find it's not enormously accurate um, as you can see we went round once and it didn't click over um, so I prefer to use um, one of these um, which is just a little finger one I just got it on Amazon I'll pop the link below um, and every time you see the yellow pin I also have a bit of masking tape um, just on this as well and um, just because sometimes I like when the machine is around here I am around the other side I struggle to see where the white needle is when it's down so I just have a bit of masking tape there and then every time I see this bit of masking tape come around I just give it a click and a click and a click um, and I find that just as good it's also good if your machine doesn't come with an inbuilt counter so i'm just going to reset that okay and then round we go i'm going to pop my yarn in a mixing bowl on the floor just because i find that means it gets less tangled okay time lapse time for you guys Thank you. 
Okay, so that's the first 20 rows done. Um, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to give um, them a quick yank just to make sure we don't have any drop stitches. So um, all the way around, just give it a pull. No drop stitches. Wonderful. Obviously, if we get any, then I'll, I'll show you how to fix those. Um, but I'm not going to wish for drop stitches. <laughs> um, okay. So let's start up. And um, what you can do is you can do that sort of every five to ten rows. Um, just stop and give everything a tug. Um, and then if you find some drop stitches, you don't have to unpick too many. Okay, so let's keep going. Okay, and that is 75 rows. Um, as you can see, the count, I only counted 52. Um, so that's just something to keep in mind. Okay, so now we wanna change color. Um, so what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna snip this green yarn. We have about a two hand widths um, of slack and just chuck that down the center. And then grab your fluffy yarn, the end out, is we're just going to lie this down um, next to the strand that we've just taken off. After we've done a couple of rows, we'll tie that in a knot. Um, so we just make sure it goes under that pin, under there, and then in there. And that's going to go in the, the middle. Put it in the middle? No, I'm going to put it, yeah, I'll put it in the middle and we'll see how that goes. Um, so what you want to do with this yarn is, because um, it's a little bit fluffy, the pins don't always um, pick it up. So um, I'm going to actually change my perspective to watch this. Usually I stand up over the machine so I can watch everything, um, but I'm going to sit down. So instead of having this angle, I can have this angle so I can make sure that it's taking um, under the pins. Um, just to make sure that that works. Okay. All right. And the other thing I'm going to do um, is that it needs to be pulled down um, to make sure um, that it's it's pulling down. <laughs> um, so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to, I've got my hand underneath here and I'm just going to pull it and twist it a little bit. And then what I'm going to do is I'm just going to grab the dumbbell. I'm just going to lie it on the yarn there. And then you can see it's pulling everything around. Um, and if you touch it, it's it's springy and it's all stretched and it's all pulled through. You can get yarn weights, um, machine weights to clip on, um, but they're really expensive. Like they're £40 each and I'd need like six. So... A dumbbell works just fine. You could probably put, um, if you had a bowl, you could put a bowl in there and put maybe some um, coins or something in it. That would also be a really good idea. Um, I might actually switch to that um, at another point. Um, but the dumbbell works fine for me and it's what I had on hand um, as I use it as a weight for um, the tripod. Okay, so let's get cracking with this. Um, I don't know how many rows I'm going to do of this. Um, that's what the tape measures for. Um, so measure sort of how big you want the brim, maybe base that on your um, your forehead height. I think I'm going to aim for about eight centimeters. Um, so we'll just keep measuring, measuring that as I go um, and see how. Um, but it'll all depend on how thick your yarn is um, and what your gauge is. So let's get cracking with that. Okay, 
right, so I've done four rows. I'm just going to give everything a bit of a tug. Looking good. Give her a twist. Pop the dumbbell back in there. And continue. There. So can you see that? Didn't catch the yarn, so I'm just gonna backtrack just a wee bit, just so we can lift that pin. Gonna be hard to film while <laughs> trying to do this. I apologize if the camera angles are weird. Okay. Make sure that goes over the pin there under there and under there and we'll just give that a tug there we go disaster averted okay so i quite like the idea of the the bowl of money <laughs> as a weight so let's give that a go yeah that works really well might actually be a bit heavy. <laughs> We've been a bit generous with the coinage. Um, but you can see she's pulling that down nicely. Let's do a round and, and see how it goes. Hmm. It did seem to work, but it seems to have sunken a lot quicker um, than the dumbbell does. So maybe I need a bigger bowl or not as heavy. Um, but it's something you can experiment with, um, or of course, if you're flush, you could just <laughs> buy those weights, which, you know, maybe Santa might bring me them, you never know. But I'm going to stick with the dumbbell for now. Hmm. Maybe I'll experiment with a couple of things, I might do a video um, on that later on on my channel. So that's eight rows in. Let's give her a tug. Sure, we haven't skipped any. We shouldn't have because I am watching it. Okay, and let's just measure. Let me do it on this side so you can see on camera. So just from the top there, measuring down. So we've done about three centimeters. So a while to go, um, and that was eight rows. So. I'll do another eight rows and we'll see if we have six centimeters by then. rows now. Let's have the measure. So we've got about six and a half um, there. Maybe seven at a stretch. So I think I'm going to do... So I'm at 16. I think I'm going to go to 20. So I'll do 20 rows um, and then we'll cast off. So I actually measured at 19 rows and that's at 8 centimetres, so yay! <laughs> okay, so now what we want to do is you just want to cut your tail. Temp to get it out of the tension guide. Right, and just throw that down the middle. And then, okay, so I have some scrap red yarn from the Santa hat. Um, you just want to make sure that it's basically 
long enough to go around the circumference of the machine. Obviously it's stretched when it's on the machine, um, so when you take it off it'll be a bit smaller. Um, but as long as it can go around the machine, you know you've got enough. Okay, so I'm just going to thread that onto my darning needle. Don't need the counter on anymore. Okay. So what we're going to do is we're just going to go around the machine um, and pick up the stitches as we go. So start with a couple to begin with just while it's tight on the machine because it's hard to get your needle underneath. It's different when you're working with a flat panel. Um, as you'll have seen in my cardigan video, um, you can take off quite a few from the get-go. Um, but because this is all the way around, it's quite tight. So just maybe start with a couple to begin with. So just spinning the machine and just picking them up. Ah, see, you, you can't take off more than really one at a time. It's just not worth the risk of it falling off the machine. You see, as we're starting to loosen up, I can start doing it two at a time. Okay, I'm really starting to get nice and loose now, so I'm going to try three, Let's see if I can take three off at once. Just do what you're comfortable with. I mean, if you only want to do one at a time, just do one at a time. There's no rush. She's so pretty. Okay, so to make it a hat, and the first things we want to do is get the, the coloured end, green or red, whichever you decided to do. Grab your yarn tail and give her a yank. Mine likes to twist, so just keep pushing it in. Apologies for the noise. Seems like my neighbour's playing with the bins. So just pull it as tight as you can and we are putting a pom-pom on the top so it doesn't have to be uber closed okay got a nice long tail grab your tapestry needle again okay then what we're gonna do is i like to just go around in a circle and pick up a few stitches you're happy with it, you want to throw some more yarn and just tie a wee knot. Then just shove the yarn through the hole, leaving a bit of a tail on the inside and chop her off. And then for this end, we're just going to finish that off um, with a crochet stitch. Probably should have left a longer tail, to be honest. Learn from my mistakes. Leave a longer tail. Um, but I'm just going to attach this with a magic knot, which, because it's a thick yarn, it's not going to look so magic. <laughs> Pop your crochet hook in the hole there. Grab the yarn, pull through. You've got one loop on your hook. Do the same. So just where the yarn's going through the hole there. You might need to pull it up a bit. Yarn over and pull through. 
then what you're going to do is you're going to yarn over and pull through both. That's the first one done. They're easier after that. Okay, so again, through this hole, I might have to pull it up to make the hole actually visible. Yarn over, pull through, yarn over, pull through both. I'll show you that one more time. So through the hole, pull her up first. I cannot imagine actually knitting with this yarn. Okay, and then just do that all the way around till you get to here. Okay, so I've just done my final stitch. Um, and then what I'm going to do is I'm just going to um, join uh, with a slip stitch. So, whoop, and then I like to chain one, which is a nice way of creating a knot. Okay, and if you like this look that would be you finished um but personally i like i think this side looks a bit more fluffy the pearls what you want to do is you want to have a really long tail it needs to go around at least twice you're just going to pull through this loop to secure that knot there we go that's nice and secure and then we're going to thread this into Trusty darning needle again. Okay. And I'm just going to fold this up just so the brim folds over just a little bit for a bit of a stretch. And because this is nice and fluffy and bumpy, you can just go in anywhere you like. So go in there, catching the green underneath and coming up next stitch. There we go. So I'm just going to do that all the way around. I'm going to continually stretch just to make sure that I don't mess with any of the tension and I'll see you back here. So she's looking very cute. We are just missing one important piece. Okay. Grab some more of your fluffy yarn. Um, and then um, I like quite a big pom-pom. So I'm going to grab a bigger crochet hook. This is an eight millimeter. Um, but use whatever crochet hook you like. Um, obviously the bigger one you use, the more um, bigger your pom-pom is going to be. So I'm just going to make a slip knot, but not really. It's going to be a magic circle. And I'm going to chain one and then do five, five or six single crochet. Five and give that a tug to make it into a circle. Okay, and then as you would do for a normal circle, I'm just going to do two single crochet in each one of these. So then we'll have 10. Okay, so now we have 10 stitches around the outside. Now I'm going to do um, one in, do one in the first stitch, then two, then one, then two. So we'll have 15. So just repeat that pattern until you have 15. One in there, two in this one, and then one in this one. Okay, 
So now we have 15. Um, and now what I'm going to do is, um, I think that's quite a nice size. So I'm just going to do um, one row of just one in each stitch. So another 15. Okay, so that's another 15 down. So if you want it to be a bit bigger, um, you could do another increase and then another um, regular. So you could do um, one, double, one, double, one, double, and then a one all the way around. Um, but I want my pom-pom to be a little bit smaller than Santa, since this is for the elf hat. Um, so I'm just going to start with my decreases. Um, so we're just going to do what we did this way, but in reverse. So on the next row, I'm going to... Um, one single crochet then I'm gonna um, do two together one single crochet two together and um, all the way around and then I should have ten stitches again so a single crochet in here and then to do two together you just go into this stitch pull up into the next stitch yarn over pull up and then you go through all three and that's two then just a normal one is three and do two together is four normal one is five so it's starting to take a ball shape now and um, so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to pull my hook up um, and I'm going to bury this tail so just Stick my hook through the bottom, grab the tail, and pull her through to the inside. I'm not going to secure it or anything. Um, this is quite a stiff yarn, so it should be fine. Uh, so we've got the tail in there, and now before it gets too narrow, um, what I'm also going to do is I'm going to stuff this. You can leave it unstuffed if you want, um, especially if you're using a really sturdy, fluffy yarn like me, it will keep its shape. Um, but if you had some padding on hand, uh, which I'm just using an old, old bed pillow, um, you can pop some stuffing in. Um, you can also use um, some cabbage. So if you have fabric scraps, chop them up and put them inside. Um, anything you have, really. If you have an old t-shirt, you could chop that up as well. Okay, so... Not a whole lot of stuffing because I still want to be able to get access to my stitches. So pop that in, pop my hook back in, pull tight. Okay, and now what we're going to do is we're going to do stitch two together for all the stitches all the way around. And you might have to wiggle your way around the wadding. I'm just going to chain one. Pull that tight and then leave a bit of a tail, not too long, and pull that through to secure the knot and we're going to use this tail just to, to fully close that up but just give it a bit of a rearrange first. Okay, so once again, trusty darning needle. And I think I bought these on Amazon, so I'll link to them below. And just, I'm just going to go under each stitch. <laughs> Pull out some wadding as I do. Just pulling tighter as I go. Pull that all the way tight. Okay, and because I find this bit's a bit more of a ball than the bottom bit, um, it's a bit flatter, so I am actually going to use this end to attach it to the hat. So bring back our trusty elf hat. We already have the yarn attached, so stick my hand on the inside and place it on the top and then each of these ridges I'm just going to go through let's get rid of that wadding that is stuck on there get off okay. 
so there we go and then back up in here and through the next and just keep going around and around until you're confident it's nice and secure especially if you're going to be dancing at Christmas parties and things so one more stitch I think and then we'll be nice and secure okay and then what I'm going to do is I'm just going to pop that in the inside of the hat Stick my hand through to grab the needle, pull that through. Okay. Okay. So then just like what we did with the other yarn, I'm just gonna pick up Ooh. I want to tie that in a knot. There we go. And then a bit of a tail. It's going to be hidden inside the hat. There we go. She's all done. Last thing to do is to try it on.